So the first thing I want to do is to create our model class. So I'm going to go over to the main package. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to create a new package. So I'm going to go down here, package, and let's just call this model or we can call it domain as well. Um, usually it's domain or model. This is where you keep all your model classes. So here I'm going to go ahead and create a new class and I'm going to call it employee. So this is going to represent the employee uh in the application that we're going to be managing so the first thing i want to do is i want to give him an id so i'm going to drive it and that's going to be of type long and i'm just going to do id um and then i want to give him a name so it's the private uh that's going to be a string that's going to be name then i want to give him an email so i'm going to do another string uh email and i want to give him a job title so that's going to be private another string and let's just call this job title so that's going to be like whatever they are like um, database developer or ux developer or java developer or python developer or javascript developer and then uh, let's get their phone number and again this is just me making this up so this is something that's going to come from the requirements of the application that you're building um that's not something you're gonna you know just be taking off the top of your head so and let's give them an image uh, that's going to be image url so this image can also be like an actual file like a, like a java file like this um but we're not going to be doing that because um, that's not the best way to save images even though at the end of the day the image is going to be stored on the server right but usually in applications like this you want to point to the location of the actual uh, picture and this is what this is going to be doing so this is going to hold the location where we can read this file and then um, show it to the to the user and let's give him some random code like let's say every employee has like some random code so let's do uh, string employee code and i just made that up um you know you can think of any any kind of scenario that you want so this is everything that an employee is going to have. Um, and again, this is really up to you or up to whatever application you're building that I just made this up. So another thing I want to do is to implement serializable. And I'm going to tell you why uh, I'm doing this. So serializable from java.io. So the serializable, it helps you know transform this um, Java class into different types of stream because this class is going to be saved in a database and then it's going to be sent to the front end as JSON. Uh, so it's always best to uh, make this make classes that are going to be in different uh, types of stream implement the serializable because it helps with this whole process. Now, what I want to do is to map this class to a database, right? So I want this class to be a table in some database. Um, and I can give it any name I want. By default, it's going to be employee. But the point is, I want this class to be in a database so that I can update and delete and do whatever operation that I need to do. And this is why we brought in the JPA repository, uh, because it's going to allow us to do this. So let's go over on top and I'm going to do add entity. And this is going to make sure that this class is mapped to any database that we have configured uh, on the class path. And I need also to give this a uh, primary key, which is going to be the primary key in the database. And that's why I'm using this ID here. And to do this, you just have to do add ID and make sure you're bringing everything from Java, uh, Java X persistence. And also we need to tell it how to generate this information. So I'm just going to do add uh, generated value. And here we just need to pass in the strategy. So I'm going to do, we could also leave it like this. It would still work. Um, but if you want to be specific, we can just do strategy equals um, generation type. And we can make this auto or identity. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to do identity in this case. Um, you can look those up because it's a few of them, uh, but you can look them up, uh, what they mean actually, like what is happening when you select them. But any one of them, and in this case, will do the trick for us because we're not really concerned about, you know, performance and database and all that stuff. We just need to have this saved in a database right now. So we don't need to carry much. We could just do auto or whatever. It would still work. And then um, another thing I want to specify here, actually you can specify a lot of annotation on this ID to configure it, but there's one that I want to show you. So if I do add column, I can specify some column information, right? So let's say I don't want this to be, um, to be updated. Like once it's set, it's set forever. So I can do uh, nullable and I can set this to false. And I can also do updatable and set this to false. Okay, so that way once this is set, 
it can never be updated uh, in our database. And we can do the same for the employee code, uh, assuming that the employee code is like some some secret thing in our company, and uh, only one can only one employee can have one at a time, and it shouldn't be updated. Like we 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 treat it as an ID, but I'm just making it up here, um, just for the sake of a of an actual scenario. So now that we have this class, um, there's another library called Lumbach. We could just use Lumbach to generate getters and setters and uh, constructors, but I'm just going to do it by hand because I didn't want to bring a Lumbach into this. So I'm going to generate constructors, default constructor, and then getters and setters for this class. So I went ahead and generated getters and setters. As you can see, we have all of the information here. We have our default constructor, uh, constructor with parameters, and we have all of our getters and setters. And then at the bottom, I have this two string method in case that I want to uh, print this out so that I can see a nice print out and not the location of the object. So that's what we have to do for the actual employee. Um, in the next lecture, we're going to wire up the database connectivity and then we're going to start the application and see if we can map this actual class in the database as a table.